you. Um, I would like to call the uh, school committee to order on tonight, Wednesday, October 23rd. Uh, I would like to call the select board to order. Thank you. Um, my name is Jean Borowski, and I am not the chair of the school committee. <laughs> However, the, the chair has been delayed. He intends to be here very, very shortly, and he will join the meeting. Uh, we were holding the meeting in an attempt. He really wants to be here, um, but we, we feel at this point that we need to move forward with the meeting. So we're going to get started. Um, we're here this evening as a joint meeting of the select board and the school committee to fill a vacancy that was created uh, just a few weeks back by um, a resignation on the school committee. We have two candidates tonight, Pat Cali. Is it Patricia or Pat? Pat Cali, Pat Cali, and Alicia Williams um, have both applied to fill this vacancy. So I, I guess what I would propose, um, if, uh, alphabetically by last name, um, if Pat wouldn't mind taking the microphone and just briefly introducing yourself, telling us a little bit about yourself and why you're interested. I'll then have you take a seat. Alicia will ask you to do the same thing. Um, and then we'll bring Pat back up. If anyone on the board has questions, we will ask them. I'm going to monitor time to make sure that you both get kind of equal time. Um, we'll do the same with Alicia. We'll have some time for a brief discussion and we'll take a vote. So before I go to you, Pat, does that sound good to both my school committee and my select board colleagues? As a plan. Okay. Uh, Pat, please. Hi. Um, am I speaking loud enough? Okay. All right. Um, so I'm Pat Kelly. I am Is a. Is microphone on? There's a green light. <laughs> That's okay. There's two microphones. Oh, okay. All right. It's a little bit like a press conference. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I don't do those. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm a 23 year resident of Reading um, and. I've been involved in public education most of my life. I'm a product of public schools. My mother was an excellent elementary school teacher who um, loved her career uh, right to the end. Um, and she inspired me to go into um, the educational field, but as I um, started, went through college, I stumbled across the, the uh, field of speech language pathology, and I ended up uh, completing my master's in that program. Um, and I've really enjoyed that for, uh, almost 35 years now, um, and have spent most of my career in public education. So um, my interest in uh, serving on the school committee stems from um, being a taxpayer who likes to make sure that uh, their, their dollars are being spent well and wisely, um, and just my love for education. Uh, I feel like I could bring the perspective of someone who's in and out of classrooms every day, um, and who has also experienced um, the changes in education over the years, and especially special education. Um, having worked in four different states um, and several different school districts, I've seen a lot of things, a lot of policies come and go, a lot of policies that worked well, and those that did not. And so bringing that experience with me, I think, can have some advantages. Uh, and lastly, I would say as a member of IEP teams, individual education plan teams in schools for so many years. Um, I think that's helped me hone my skills as a team player, someone who can look at data, analyze data, bring their own uh, expertise in, in the analysis to the table, but also have an open mind and be ready to listen to the other experts in the group and um, to really come to a group decision that we feel is you know, the best, in, in the case of an IEP, for an individual child. And so in this case, we would be looking at the collective children of Reading. But um, those are the reasons I was interested in serving, and those are the things I think I could bring to the position. So, thank you so much. Thank you. Ms. Williams? I wrote a statement. Am I allowed to read it? Is that okay? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, dear board members, I ask for your consideration for the vacancy of the school committee. I'm an involved parent who's been attending school committee meetings for six years. I have three children in Reading, public schools, rise to third grade with one in special education. I have spoken and advocated for our kids in schools over 20 times since 2016 with this committee. My interest in both the schools and our school committee has been longstanding and continuous, even after I ran for this seat in 2018 and lost by 167 votes. I continue to stay involved. I care deeply about our town matters. To that end, I also serve as a town meeting member since 2018. Having 
a member of the school committee who has a direct experience with the schools and our special education programming adds value to the committee. The next few months, the school committee will work on the budget and voting to set district goals. Special education is roughly a third of the school budget, which itself is roughly two thirds of the town budget. As you know, special education figures heavily into the accommodated costs. I have read and reread the Walker report and I follow the K through 12 budget very closely. My knowledge of special education programming, costs, issues and challenges would be a very helpful perspective. I have advocated for so many things for our schools. I have worked hard to bring back the music at RISE. Thanks to this board, administrators and principals, we now have music at RISE. And following the discussion of the high school late start initiative closely, I noticed the RISE start time would be impacted as well as brought as well and brought it to the committee's attention. As a result, the RISE start time was changed. In both my former CPAC roles and as a parent, my input in my own experience with the rise to kindergarten school transition has helped shape the way special education program placement is handled. I am proud to have reactivated the Special Education Parent Advisory Council after it was defunct for four years. It is now a thriving group with four new board members this year. I have worked tirelessly to activate parent engagement with this committee and the issues that surround our schools. I've been a longtime volunteer in and out of the classroom. I have been a classroom understanding disabilities volunteer, having donated my time and talent to photograph their UD gala. I am I also ran a fundraiser this past weekend for them. I've done countless other things that go under the radar to help move this community forward in a positive way. To keep this brief, I will just say beyond school committee, I've been involved, active and present in our community. If selected, I would bring my knowledge of the past committee issues and our schools and I'd be able to get up to speed quickly. I thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Our chair has arrived, so I'll I, keep keep going. You're sure? Fine. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, so at this point, thank you both for those opening statements. Um, I will ask uh, Ms. Callie to take the microphone, and we're going to open it up to um, questions from either members of the select board or the school committee, in no particular order. <laughs> Mr. Parks. What changes should be made in state and local at the state and local level regarding public education? Loaded question. I was going to say, do I have like <laughs> open ticket? Um, I, some of my concerns have been um, uh, the push of the curriculum um, down to the lower levels. I feel like there's a lot of stress. I'm currently working in a preschool program, and I feel like there's a lot of stress to get preschool ready for kindergarten when we used to be getting, you know, the preschool kindergarten is now, is the curriculum is now the kindergarten curriculum that I grew up with, and et cetera. Um, and I, I'm getting concerned that some of the developmental expectations are not really developmentally appropriate. Um, and I, that also the depth and the breadth and the um, amount of curriculum has caused a lot of, um, of the lower grades to lose a lot of things like recess and and playtime that is still um, important for the social skill building. Um, and we're now seeing more kids with anxiety, more kids with um, what we call social thinking issues. Um, so those are some of the, the concerns there. I do think um, I, just overall in, in our state, um, I just see a need for populations just, it seems like we're booming and we're not able to keep up with our facilities, um, with our programming. Um, and so that's, I think, a constant challenge for everyone. Um, as far as changes, I, I, I think my greatest concern, yeah, is just, is just um, moving the developmental expectations down without really, we don't necessarily have the science to prove that that's, that's appropriate. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Mr. Doxer. Thanks. Um, so I actually have a question for, for both, both of you, but I'll start with you, if that's all right. So the essence of how we succeed in Reading, be it in education or other areas, is by listening, finding balance, and compromising to move things ahead. 
What's your style in working in collaborative groups, and how do you see that helping us move education ahead in Reading? Um, so I had referenced my experience as part of an IEP team, and I do think that is critical because I, um, I often, you know, find myself, um, you know, there's kind of your ideal world situation, and then what what is going to be the best outcome for everyone, um, and so I, I think I have gained quite a bit of experience in that. I think in my role. Um, I, sorry, Mark, I'm, I started like thinking way too big. Can you just repeat your question yeah. one more time? Because I started like looking yeah. at, I think, a much larger question than you were actually yeah. Yeah. asking No, me. sorry, let me, let me bring it down. So uh, the, the core of it is that the essence is how do you work in collaborative groups okay. and how do you see that moving education ahead in red? Okay, all right. Yeah, so my focus would be so much, I think, on um, you know, curriculum development, socially appropriateness, and all that. But I realize that um, that's going to be my level of expertise. But I also think, I know as a taxpayer, um, that the budget is very important. And, and we may not always have the money that we want to do everything with. And so the compromise part would be, you know, me kind of choosing in my own mind as I'm presenting and, and having discussions with other members. Um, what are, what are the things that I really think are the most important? Can I let the other things go in, in um, out of respect for the greater good and getting, getting the work done and getting a budget that meets everyone's needs to the best possible, um, the best of, of our ability? Thank you. Um, Mr. Friedman. Um, so you are now, you have now for a long time been on the teaching side of the school equation. How do you think that will help you in an administrative capacity being on the school committee? Okay. I think um, a lot of times there are suggestions made that are perhaps budget driven that may work in the context of a classroom, but some, but they may not play out in the context of a classroom the way um, another person might envision. And so I, over the years, I've seen that happen. Um, numbers may look good on paper that don't necessarily play out as well when you're actually dealing with the people behind those numbers. Um, and so I think just to have a classroom perspective and a, and a building level um, educator in and out of those classrooms um, can bring that perspective sometimes, and, and it may be, maybe it doesn't change things, but I might be able to bring up questions that maybe other parties haven't necessarily thought of. Um, so that would be, that would be, I see, I see my benefit there. Thank you. Ms. Alvarado, thank you. Um, first, Pat, thank you for your interest and thank you for applying for this position. Um, my question is, this particular term goes until early March when we have our local election. What do you think your biggest impact and contribution will be during that time? Hmm. Um, hmm. I think you probably will be swinging and there will be budget yes, we are discussions, I'm budget assuming. Season. Yeah, and so I think um, just again being able to bring in kind of what are, what are the, um, the educators point of view, what are their concerns. Um, I have been, um, actually as a, an MTA member, I have been involved in union negotiations too, so I sort of have that understanding, that background noise in my head too, so I understand how some of those things can play out, um, so I would be able to bring that experience. Um, and I know also we're looking at, you know, the kindergarten population and half days, full days, um, space issues, and so I, I definitely have some strong um, feelings about that, and I have um, seen how it's been done recently in other districts um, for better and worse, and so I would like to, you know, bring those things into the discussions. Thank you. Mr. Robinson. Yes. First of all, I'd like to apologize for being late, uh, <laughs> and, and also like to thank uh, Pat and, and Alicia for, for stepping up. Uh, I guess my question is, can you just talk about, uh, I mean, the budget is a big thing, obviously, but just talk about what 
you, if you've been following what we're we're doing now, what you see uh, as as big challenges for us other than the budget? Because I look at the budget as kind of that's housekeeping. That's something we have to do every right. year. But yeah. but uh, there's a lot of things on our plate right now, and mm -hmm. what what your thoughts are on that? Yeah, it does seem like um, resolving sort of the whole kindergarten picture is on um, is on the minds in a lot of towns locally and I know that that is an issue here um, I think um, sorry Chuck I just did the same thing that I did to Mark I started like Drifting the bigger. Can you ask me your question? So yeah, I mean, if just, if, if you've been paying attention to right. to what we're we're involved in right yeah. now, kind of what? Yeah. How do you see tackling okay. those things? Yeah, I guess that's why I started with kindergarten. Yeah, because I I know there has been a lot of discussion of like tr trying to move to full day kindergarten, and I do think that um, is is going to be important. How soon we can do that? How we could do that? I don't know. I, you know, I'd like to see that happen, um, and I would probably feel like that's uh, that's something that I would have a, a bigger contribution in than probably some of the other issues. Um, I would like to see this idea of um, the socialization and the the, the playtime and the recess time, and make sure that it, try to get, get our policies crafted as 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 much as can be so that, that that's not eliminated unnecessarily. I think there's a, a lot that can, um, there's a lot of benefit that comes to children from those times, especially in the lower grades. Um, and I think it's, it's been overlooked um, in, in favor of, you know, on time, academic time, test related time. So I, I would imagine those were, would be the places that I would be able to do the most contributing. Thank you. So your slot of time is just about up, okay. so that's good. I I've got, yeah. absolutely. Um, Dr. Doxer has been waiting very patiently, so we will have uh, Dr. Doxer, Mr. Halsey, Mr. Wise, and I guess at that point, um, I would ask that, unless it's a burning question that you haven't had, that really needs to be asked, just in the name of making sure that Ms. Williams gets equal time. Um, so, Dr. Yeah, Doxer. We'll stop asking people to repeat their questions. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you've spoken a little bit about this. Um, thank you. I'm wondering if you could maybe give an example of a conflict, and you mentioned the IEP meetings that you've been in where you have to work collaboratively. Yes. It's really hard sometimes when we have a discussion and then the vote ends up not necessarily to capture what the individuals might want. Mm -hmm. and we're all in the position of thinking district-wide or individually for our children, for our friends. And we have to balance this in our decision-making. And I'm wondering if you can just talk a little bit about, maybe give an example, no names, right. of yep. a, yes. a decision that you've been involved in that didn't go your way and how you were able to support that decision going forward. Okay. Um, so there have been times where, as a team member, that I have felt that a child's communication needs were so, uh, so pressing, so severe, that they really would benefit from being enrolled in one of our preschool classrooms in addition to um, just see, receiving speech therapy on a by appointment basis. And there have been times that I've been able to uh, advocate for that successfully, but there have been a number of times where that has not been the outcome. Um, and it's just, um, you come to a point where you need to step away because adding more contention to the issue is not going to make it any better. And if you've, if everyone has spoken their piece and you can see you're not changing minds, you need to then look for, you know, what's the best outcome for this child. So at that point, then I just made, you know, I just wrote the best IEP I could for those speech services. Um, and, you know, we moved forward. And I was able to also say, let's monitor this um, and look down down the road in six months and make sure that we're seeing this child progress in, in the way that we would like to see. 
and maybe we at that time might need to revisit a classroom placement. So, thank, thank you. you very much. I feel like we're entering the lightning round. Mr. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, but I think we really have to be. This is such an important thing. It is. Time yes, is. absolutely. It, you know, it, it takes whatever it takes. Yep. In the way of time. And just to be clear to Ms. Williams, I am marking the time, and we will make sure that you have as uh, that it is equal. Um, so, Pat, thank you very much for offering to volunteer your time. I mean, um, this is a, it's, a, it's short, but it's important. Mm -hmm. You know, this particular vacancy comes at a time that there's high intensity um, as far as meetings are concerned and a lot of things have to get done. So thank you for that. Um, my question is really kind of, um, there's a two-part question. The first one is one word, so okay. it's not going to be long. I might be um, able to do that. You obviously have a great interest. You ran for the school committee um, uh, most previously. Um, so since April, um, do you feel like you've stayed as closely in touch with the school committee's activities as you were leading up to April? Uh, I would say probably not. Okay. Probably not. Um, and so um, armed with that, um, there's a there's obviously a hit the ground running kind of thing to mm -hmm. this position. Yeah. Um, what do you think that you can add hit the ground running knowing that you've stayed a little disconnected? What would you do to catch up with the other five um, and, and get into sync? Right, yes. Yeah, that's a valid point. And I um, would do a lot of homework. And I have, that's one reason I felt like I could do it is that I do have that, um, that kind of time I don't have. You know, little children at home, I'm not caring for an aging parent. I have, you know, my, I could devote an extraordinary amount of time, really, you know, outside of my, um, my day job. This wouldn't be my job. So, <clears throat> to, to be short and sweet on that, yes. Thank you. Yeah, Mr. Wise. Okay, I guess I'm the last one, unless, and we squeeze, you know, get other ones in there. Apologies. Um, I'll also, since that seems to be the thing to do, say thank you. <laughs> um, the role of a school committee is basically three-pronged, budget, goals and review, and policy. Um, you spoke a little bit about policy when you talked about research and whatnot, uh, recess for kindergarten classes. If you were to take your hat off and look at what you know about writing public schools right now, what one goal would you create or would you advocate for for the writing public schools in your next five months, as the case may be? One goal. Um, um, probably and successful. Um, best resolution for kindergarten for the next couple years, um, and that would be. And my best resolution would be somehow moving toward full day within the next couple of years for everybody. I believe Ms. Landry has a question. Uh, yes, thank you to both of you uh, for, for applying for this important position. Uh, you're both clearly well qualified. Uh, I wanted to ask what distinguishes you in your candidacy and why should we vote for you? And I will pose the same question to both candidates. <laughs> right. um, I would say just, again, the, the variety of experiences I've had in education um, and kind of coming to, as much as I am less connected, I also have like no, um, no baggage that I'm bringing with, <laughs> with um, in terms of the Reading Public Schools and um, and my ability just to devote a lot of time to it. So, thank you. Any other burning questions, or can we? I think we're ready to move on. Thank you so much, okay. Ms. Kelly. It's not easy to do this with the microphone and on camera. So thank you. First. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This, is, this is incredibly hard, as you, some of you know. It absolutely is. Thanks so much, Ms. Williams. Yeah. Um, so I'll open it up to questions. We'll start again. I can go early this time. All right, we'll switch Mine's up the order. Be simple. Um, <laughs> Sounds good. I'm really interested in the same thing that I asked Pat. And Alicia, I want to thank you as well. Um, both of you, I mean, it's so great that we've got two people that were interested enough to run 
and then interested enough to come back um, and, and offer their help. So I, I, again, thanks to you and to Pat in that regard. So can my kind of my one, my simple question is, um, do you feel you've stayed engaged since April um, at the same level or less than you were in the months leading up to April? Absolutely. Um, that's a really great question. I have stayed engaged. I, in full disclosure, I have actually not been in this room because my couch is a lot more comfortable than these chairs. So I've been watching at home um, and, you know, I've been following the upcoming meetings and I was here after the election in April uh, to, to sort of talk about the policy where uh, that they just updated in May, and I'm going to get the policy number wrong if I if I mention it, but um, there was a policy that came up in May, and I talked about that. So I've stayed involved. I've been following the uh, enrollment, um, the issues with Birch Meadow and the modulars. I've been following that, and I was looking at the enrollment numbers. I have a whole spreadsheet at home on enrollment numbers, so yes. Thank you. Dr. Doxa. So I actually am a creature of habit. I like asking the same question. Mm -hmm. um, and I also, I was sort of feeling the rush before, but I want to just take that second to say thank you. It's really hard, where is she, mm -hmm. to stick your neck out, Alicia and Pat. Absolutely. And um, thank you for doing this and for staying involved and, and dedicated to our schools and our kids and our community. So my question is that on the school committee, we're faced with different decisions that we're invested in, whether it's from the district point of view or because of our individual point of view, our kids or our friends. And there's um, a lot of passion that goes into the discussions and the decisions that are made. I'm wondering if you can give an example of something that didn't necessarily go your way and how you deal with that going forward because we're required to support a committee decision as we go forward. Um, yes. I would probably say I haven't had too many things that I've really, you know, been advantageous for, you know, that we've had. Um, I'd probably go back to the kindergarten decision uh, where the students had to either go to a different school or pay to go to their home school. And um, I lobbied for the policy to change and it didn't go my way, but um, I think there's a way to go about it and be respectful. And I think that I did that when it came up. Mr. Doxer. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. No need to be um, one of the things for, for each of you folks, um, you bring a lot of experience and skills, particularly in the special education area. Much more on the advocating side, Pat, much more on the teaching side, if I can overgeneralize. How will you use those skills and experiences to assist you in advocating for all the children in the school system? So, specifically, general ed as well as special ed? No, that's a great question. Um, it's hard to answer because I don't know exactly what will come up on the general ed side. I have more of an idea of what will come up on the special ed side because it's a little bit more predictable. Um, but I do have two typical children and I have one who's in first grade and I actually, people always refer to me as a sped parent because you know I ran the CPAC, which is true, I'll own that. But I'm also, I have two typical children. So I'm actually more involved with RISE with my typical child than I was when he was special ed, so. Mr. Robinson. So, uh, like some of my colleagues here, I try to frame the same question that I that I asked Pat, and I guess just like you to talk about, you know, what have you been paying attention to that that that's important uh, that uh, you know, other, as I said, other than the budget, which I don't I don't count. I, that's something we have. Just other things that we're working on that that you think that you could be involved with and help us with. Yeah. Uh, right now, I've been paying attention to what's going on with the kindergarten enrollment. I'm also looking at what is going to happen um, with where placement's going to go. I know that meeting's coming up soon. I don't know the exact date, so I've been following that. I've also been following the enrollment numbers uh, because we're talking about doing modulars at Birch Meadow, and that's of concern to me. Um, 
you know, I know we're going to spend the $750,000. We're going to ask town meeting to do that. So I've been following that. Uh, I also, you know, just have been listening to the meetings and those things, every, everything's important. Thank you. As I said to Pat, thank you for your interest and thank you for applying for these roles. Um, I will also ask the same question. Um, this term goes until the election in early March. Um, what do you anticipate contributing during that time? I think it's such a short window. There's not going to be a ton that I'm going to be able to do. I'm going to just be able to sit, listen on the committee. I'm going to be able to give my expertise on kindergarten because I do have a kindergartner going in. Uh, so I've been through the process. I understand it from the parent side. I also understand it from the school committee side. Um, I know that they have the social media policy coming up, um, and that's in a couple meetings, and that is definitely something that is of interest because I believe the board, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the Board of Selectmen is working on something similar. Are you, like it's We're getting there. What's that? Select. We're getting there. Long and winding road. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so I've been loosely following that, wondering what's going to happen on that side and wondering how it's going to transfer to the school committee side because I truly believe that social media, there's, there's two edges to that sword and I'm going to be interested to see that discussion. Um, obviously, the budget is really important, and as I said, the enrollment numbers. Thank you. Yep. Mr. Friedman. So um, thanks to Pat and to you, Alicia, for applying um, for this position. It's a, it's a rather difficult position to be in, standing in front of a microphone in front of the TV, and I'm grateful to you both for doing it. And uh, obviously, you're not doing it for the pay. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, there's no pay? No. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so uh, your, the volunteer work and the advocacy Lost work that you've money. done is laudable in, 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 in Reading schools, for Reading schools. Um, how do you, obviously, you have connections in the volunteer community and um, in the, the town community at large. How do you think those, that experience and advocacy and those connections will help you be uh, a good um, school community member? Um, I often joke that the entire town has my phone number in one capacity or another because I own my own business and I've done the CPAC. I've, I've done different things for understanding disabilities, and there's a, there's a wide net that those organizations cast. A lot of people know me, a lot of people reach out to me and talk to me. I've advocated for a lot of parents who don't want to come forward, and so I think that just being a friendly face for the committee is going to be really helpful. Thank you. Yeah. Ms. Landry. Um, thank you so much for, for stepping up. Uh, you, you both would no doubt add a lot of value to the committee. Uh, what distinguishes you in particular and why should we cast our vote for you? Um, what distinguishes myself is that I've been in these meetings for six years. I have a closet full of packets. I can show you a picture if you'd like to see. It's a little embarrassing. Um, I've been paying attention for six years. I have that knowledge. I have that history. Uh, I'm very much engaged with the parents. I'm very much engaged with what's going on. I'm going to be going into kindergarten. I have a student at RISE. I have a third grader on special education. I cover a really wide gamut of information, and I hope to bring those expertise to the committee. Thank you. Mr. Parks? Um, thank you both. I did skip that earlier. Um, what changes should be made at the state and local level regarding public education? Funding. That is my short and sweet answer. It's already being done. <laughs> well, we need more. <laughs> we need more is, is my answer. Mr. Wise. I don't know if I'm, I think there's my last. I believe you are. Yes. Um, yeah, after, let's <laughs> see if anyone has any. A deep breath, I guess. Um, <laughs> so we've talked a little bit about budget, policy, goals, budget. Um, I haven't heard anything from you about policy necessarily. Okay. So I'll ask the question slightly differently. Um, if there was one policy that Reading has that you'd want to change or a policy that does not yet exist that you'd want to implement, what would it be and why? That's a really good question. Um, there is one policy that I've actually talked to Mr. Robinson about probably two years ago, two, three years ago, that I think really does need to be changed on the committee where we hire this body 
um, is responsible for hiring the superintendent. The superintendent is responsible for hiring the director of finance and the director of student services, but they don't get to go to those interviews. It's not part of the body's job. I would like to see the school committee actually take part in those hirings because they are such important positions and you work directly with them. Is that a good answer? <laughs> You're staring at me. <laughs> Any other questions? Right. Yes, Ms. Roberts. Ask a yes. follow up. I guess no, no one else asked it, so I guess something we ask, and I'm just curious, uh, actually this goes to both candidates. Uh, it, what is your intention in March? That's a great question, and right this minute I don't have an answer. Was that a would or would not? I would not say no. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you both so much. Um, it's been said by colleagues, but I will, I will repeat it. We are so lucky in this town. Um, I don't appreciate the very difficult position you put us in because you're both incredibly qualified in a number of different ways. So thank you so much for, um, for stepping up and for volunteering. Um, that was a really good discussion, really good interviews. Um, so we can have a discussion as a joint board if, that, if there's appetite for that. It's also possible to say I heard everything I needed to hear and I'm ready to vote. So I'll sort of open it up for discussion if there's appetite for it. Otherwise, we can go right to a vote. I'm fine with going right to a vote. Sounds good. It's the quietest you're ever going to hear this many, these people. <laughs> <laughs> ever. Absolutely. Um, so I'm going to start at this end of the table and work my way down. Um, I've, oh, I have not done this in a while. It's roll call, and is it by oh, name? You give, you put out a name, and then it's yes or no. Thank you, Dr. Doherty. Um, so we went um, alphabetically by last name, so I'm going to do that again unless there's any objections. So are we saying yes or no, or are we saying which yes. candidate we're voting for? No, I am going to say a name, and you either say yes or no. Um, and I, that is, it's a roll call, so I believe it has to be that way, and I'm, we just went the way the ballot goes, which is alphabetically by last name. So we're going to start with Patricia Kelly. Um, and um, so the nominee for the vacancy is Patricia Kelly. Roll call vote. I'm going to start with Mr. Parks. Yes. Mr. Friedman. Yes. Mr. Wise. No. Ms. Alvarado. Yes. Ms. No. Robinson. Mr. Halsey. No. Mr. Doxer. Yes. Dr. Doxer. Ms. Landry? Yes. I, um, Jean Brasky, will vote yes. Um, and I want to thank Ms. Williams for her continued engagement and congratulate Ms. Callie. I don't believe our boards have any further business this evening, so I will hear a motion from my board. I motion to be adjourned. Is there a second? Ha second, second for Mr. Wise? It has to be roll call. Oh. The Oh, do we have a motion written up? I'll, I'll make a motion. Thank you, Mr. Robinson. I can make the motion. Yeah. Oh, Mr. Robinson. I have it right here. He has the language memorized. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have it in my head. Yeah. <laughs> Move to, move to enter into executive session to discuss strategy with respect to litigation and not to return to open session. Yes. Second for Mr. Was that a second, Mr. Second. Parks? Second. Okay. Mr. Parks? Yes. Mr. Wise? Yes. Mr. Robinson? Yes. Dr. Doxer? Yes. Did I miss one? Yourself? Yourself. Jean Browski? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. A motion to adjourn. I think that's, In, um, that's what it is. I'm, oh, right, you're adjourn. right. And Ms. Alvarado? Thank you. Um, is there a motion to adjourn the select board? Andy, thank you. Is there a second? Second. Mark, all those in favor? Thank you. I'm sorry, you're going to be a little.